One year after the killing of George Floyd, our members offer reflections on what they've been learning in this community about racial justice. Here's a question typically posed by our seven and five-year-old daughters. Mom and dad, why did God create different colors of skin when people can be so mean and unfair? This question usually came as we were closing out of our typical Sunday morning Zoom calls with family, youth, and children. This past year, the amazing FYC staff has taught Westminster's children about God through a lens of racial equity. Our girls and the other children have learned about the connection between our faith in a just and loving God and the community we want to have and the role we play in helping close that gap. All of this has enriched the conversations we're also having as a family about race and privilege. It has introduced complex topics that generate questions long after the Zoom call and encouraged us to make space to more frequently answer them. As parents without answers to the really tough and really good questions, we've learned how to help our kids see the world for what it is while pointing to our faith and the love of God as it guides us and helps us all to work to change it for the better. I have learned much during the two pandemics. The health pandemic caused a high death count among African Americans who were said to be vaccine hesitant. We African Americans are said to be such because of the Tuskegee syphilis experiment and the use of Henrietta Lacks cancer cells. However, our mistrust in the medical system is long-standing and it's based on our mistrust of physicians who lack interpersonal skills, technical competence, and their perceived quest for profit, ex expectation of racism, experimentation during routine provisions of healthcare, which continued through the 1990s. The video of Jeff George Floyd's murder by Minneapolis by police in Minneapolis energized the race pandemic. The world stopped for this. Confined to our homes, we could not look away. We are all dealing with life and death matters with friends and family. America is suffering along with everyone else. Meanwhile, white supremacist organizations have awakened. We have a lot to do. How do you love your enemy? when that enemy is kneeling on your neck for more than eight minutes? How long do you search for God's image in someone who yells, go back to your country? How do you pray for that child of God who doesn't know you, but hates you? In this past year, the question for many has not been, who is your neighbor, but who is your foe? And when the gospel doesn't arm us with anything sharper than love your enemy, how do we show up as Christians to fight the good fight? I have learned and try to relearn every day that love your enemies indeed our biggest weapon. It is our sure thing to victory. If my hardened heart can be softened, my enemy's heart can as well. I confessed when I wrote this reflection back in March that I couldn't muster a prayer for Derek Chauvin. Since then, I've managed to utter a feeble prayer for him. It's a start. As a manager, you are what you tolerate, advised an expert on workplace leadership. George Floyd's death taught me that this applies to racial justice in Minneapolis. As a community, we tolerated a police department that we knew had more than its fair share of thumpers and that was openly hostile to African Americans. The racial injustice we tolerate will define who we are. I thought I knew my role in racial justice and reconciliation as an African-American professional living in one of America's whitest big cities. I learned that I do not. My service and giving have been from a distance. George Floyd's death changed me. I view Minneapolis more pragmatically. I'm still changing. I still believe that God calls us to work for racial justice and reconciliation. I still hope that my daughter and son, two biracial black young adults, will live in a world with more kinship among the peoples of the earth. 
As we seek to discern where we go from here, I offer a simple breath prayer. Inhale, our work for racial justice is just beginning. Exhale, God goes before us. Amen. <laughs>